in your college education translating into practical skills uh, in your daily work? Because like I write the sentences as well as I like I have to read these cases and I take meticulous notes on them, having done readings, taking notes in class. And then I'd also say that when I was at the college, Mr. Meenan's classes were particularly difficult because my note taking is very linear and his mm. style of teaching is so fluid. And I found that there was a really steep learning curve in trying to take notes on something that's so fluid that didn't follow a particular order. Like Mr. Nicholson's classes, those are my favorite because I could follow his notes so perfectly. My notes were just beautiful. Whereas my <laughs> notes in Mr. Meenan's class were usually not as formatted as I would have preferred. And mm. so that gave me a lot of um, a lot of skills to be capable of doing that with some uh, very fluid testimonies that I read. So I think that, that that's really helped with note taking, but then also being able to consolidate the facts and uh, make connections to the law, to make reasoning and arguments for why we came to a certain decision. Funny how like the little challenges and like that's that's not particularly taught like fluid teaching style versus linear teaching style but just those little little challenges really do help are there any unexpected skills from your uh seat of wisdom years that you found particularly valuable in your cur current role i suppose that actually um, is one of them that is i would say that is one of them one thing that i was thinking of was that there's a really wonderful community environment which is which is definitely part of the life of the college and really encouraged for students to take part in the social aspect but it also requires you to have a good work-life balance like a your social and your schoolwork has to be balanced i didn't do a great job in my first year of doing that but that was a skill that i did eventually master and that that's something that has translated over into my work and family life balance that i've found is really great i'm very happy with how much I work, how much I'm, time I'm able to spend with my children, and that I don't feel burnt out and I'm capable of being present to the things I feel present and called to do. For aspiring students considering <laughs> a career in canon law, specifically from Seat of Wisdom College, what advice would you give them to stand out and succeed in the field? When you're thinking about something that you want to do, you have to make sure that you actually want to do it. And I think that law is not like any legal shows. You have to really enjoy research and studying. If you enjoy being in school and you could see yourself going into further academics, like if you could see yourself possibly doing a PhD, maybe law would be a good choice for you. I'm definitely not going to do one after doing my master's. I told my husband, I was like, if, when I start talking about a PhD, you need to stop me because it's not. <laughs> I don't think that would be a good choice for our family, but I love research. I spent a lot of time researching even just small things in my personal life. And so I would say that I'm a very academic person. And that is one of the things I really love about canon law and I guess law in general, because that's what I, other lawyers that I've spoken to say that it's, it's the same. It's not like a drama that you may have seen. Law is pretty boring. You have to be drawn to academics. Like as I, I had mentioned, there are a lot of very heavy things that you read on a regular basis, um, you know, childhood abuse and neglect, domestic violence, they're very, very common in many cases. And so being able to compartmentalize, but also having a really good community of families and marriages that are, you know, happy and strong, that is one, I think, the one thing that has made me realize that marriage as an institution and families can work really well. It's left me without being jaded about the institution of marriage. And well, I guess being in a great marriage is also helpful, but I am also surrounded by friends and you know their families who are happy and they are you know working through their struggles, but that it's not everybody's getting an annulment. That can be something that can be hard. And I know that one canon lawyer that I was speaking to recently, he was saying that being a parish priest is really great to balance that because he does see happy, strong families. He does see good, you know, communities and happy marriages and, you know, children being treated well by their parents because you do read so much heavy material. So that's the other thing is knowing yourself to know that you, you can handle some pretty heavy material. Okay, very good advice for any aspiring canon lawyer. <laughs> Are there any resources or experiences 
you wish you had known about when you were just starting out? I had some really good personal connections with Canon lawyers. And so that was so helpful in navigating both school and work situations where I've required more clarity. Mm -hmm. um, the two Canon Law Societies in North America, there's the Canadian Canon Law Society and the Canon Law Society of America have so many resources and they have student resources and they can even have ways of connecting Canon lawyers with students, especially in their area. So that that could also be really great. But I'm also personally happy to talk to anybody who's interested in going down that route. I know how helpful it is to have a personal mentor who kind of knows the ropes and can give you some insider advice. How do you continue to grow and develop in your role as a Canon lawyer? Are there ongoing learning opportunities you find valuable? Both those Canon Law Societies that I mentioned, they each have annual conferences where the latest jurisprudence from the Roman Rota would be presented by someone with insights, as well as different ways of um, interpreting the law and understanding of how to bring together all that's been written about a certain topic, especially things that would be of interest would be, I guess, new issues. So the issues of like online pornography and social media, like the propriety of priests having a social media account, which in 1983 wasn't an issue. So mm -hmm. even just there's a lot being written. And um, I actually have never been to the conferences because I was either pregnant or had a really small baby. So it hasn't worked out. I'm really hoping to go next year. The members of the Canon Law Societies also can get transcripts of those essays that are presented. And so the, especially the Canon Law Society of America actually send you a book every year of the talks presented at the conference. And so I, I always go through that. And I find that that is so helpful in helping in certain areas that I might need a little bit of brushing up on. Because even though I do marriage, I am interested in other areas as well. And it's something that even in passing, sometimes when I talk to the bishop here, we'll talk about something financial and I'm like, oh, right. I should read a little bit more about financial <laughs> um, stipulations. So I find that that is really helpful. Both of those uh, canon law societies are really helpful with continued education and learning. Can you share a particularly rewarding or impactful moment in your career that stands out to you? It was actually my first judging. I was so nervous and so scrupulous. I just really, really felt the weight of making a decision that would impact a person's, you know, access to the sacrament of marriage within the church. I just was like, oh, I, I felt like the weight really was sitting on my shoulders. And I went into the judging session. The judges and I were all unanimous on every single case, on every single ground. I guess it just helped lift a bit of my imposter syndrome because I was like, I don't even know if I know what I'm doing. Like I just finished school. And so I felt like I did know what I was doing. My education had actually helped me and that I was capable of moving into making these decisions and judgments. And so it really gave me the confidence to be able to move forward. It's not always unanimous. Sometimes we disagree and we discuss, but just knowing that I was on the right track with these experienced judges, that was a really good moment for me to step forward and continue on. What do you find most fulfilling about working as a canon lawyer? And also, I suppose, as being a mom? I would say that my perspective on people, that's been really helpful is understanding how blessed I am in my personal life and how blessed I am to have the opportunity to stay home with my children, to be financially stable, and even just to live in a country where I'm not worried about certain things. Because working for the Archdiocese of Toronto, they have so many multicultural cases of cases of people who got married in other countries. When I read cases from the Middle East, it is a real eye-opener with how blessed we are to live in Canada. It really makes our problems seem so small and our blessings so big. So that's been a really great thing. And even in the cases themselves, one thing that I find extremely gratifying is reading about them when they were young and they made this kind of impetuous, immature decision. And I could see all the different things pointing to their extreme immaturity at the time and also how they've grown since then. If it's been like 20 years since their consent and they've grown trying to make their marriage work, trying to be a good parent, trying to be a good spouse and seeing how certain people can really change and grow. And it, it's not always possible, but there have been a few cases that have just been so inspiring, just so incredibly amazing to see how people grow up, clean their life up and are able to step into a truly wonderful, holy life. That's been really incredible too.